Hello there, YouTube. In this video, we're going to take a look at this white MacBook. It's a classic plastic white MacBook. This is a 4,1 or an early 2008. It has a Core 2 Duo TA100 CPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, the hard drive was originally 120 gigabytes, and that is now a 240 gig SSD, which is very cheap and easy to upgrade. So. It already came with 4 gigs of RAM. I got this off a co-worker for a pretty good price. The original battery that was in it was working at the time I got it, but uh, I accidentally left it to discharge fully to 0%, and after that it would no longer uh, hold the charge at all. So I had to buy another battery for it. It's a shame because the battery health of that battery, at least uh, reported by Coconut Battery, was well in the 80% range. So it really wasn't all that bad for the original battery to this machine. Now it is not cosmetically perfect, as you can tell here by the light that's shining on the lid. It has the typical scratch marks on it, and they're all circular in nature, so that probably means that someone was uh, cleaning this with uh, somewhat regular uh, maintenance or whatever. Uh, didn't know where I was going with that sentence, but oh well. On the back we have some vents. On the left hand side of the laptop we have the MagSafe, Gigabit Ethernet, Mini DVI, FireWire 400, two USB 2 ports, line in, line out, casing the lock, bunch of screws, because it doesn't like to get screwed, right? Over here we have a slot loading optical drive, this is a combo drive, that means a CD reader and writer and a DVD reader. That's always how Apple call that. On the bottom there's nothing to see except for the aftermarket battery, which stands out like a sore thumb. It was cheap. I'm really not going to buy like an $80 battery for a machine that's worth literally less than 50 bucks at this point. We have a glossy 1280 by 800 display, reasonably okay keyboard, slightly yellowed, not that bad. Trackpad button is okay, it's a bit spongy. Trackpad itself feels nice and smooth, works very well. And uh, the overall condition of the machine is pretty good. As you can tell, it's not really all that cracked yet along the edges here. It has a little crack over here where the plastic has disappeared, but on uh, other edges of the laptop, it's still reasonably good, especially for a machine like this. Now, as you can see, it is now going to boot into Windows 10. This machine has been set up uh, as a dual boot. It has the latest version of OS X that it natively supports, which is 10.7.5 Lion, and the latest version of Windows 10 that I could get on here, which is Windows 10 2004. However, Windows 10 does not run well on a machine like this at all. It runs well on most other Core 2 Duo laptops for sure, but not this one. It's mostly because of the very, very poor graphics performance of this machine. It only has uh, Intel integrated graphics that come with the uh, Intel 965 chipset. Didn't even boot all that fast either, as you could tell. It's also just a SATA 1 machine. Both the hard drive and optical base are SATA 1, so 1.5 gigabit per second, which is pretty terrible. And uh, other than that, everything is working. I installed the bootcamp drivers. Everything worked fine. We have Wi-Fi. The bootcamp software is installed. We have a battery meter that's saying that it's going to be empty in an hour and a half. That's mostly because Windows is very inefficient. Under macOS it gets, uh, at least it reports that it's going to get about five to six hours with light use, but with some heavy use about three hours to four hours. So yeah, let's open up Microsoft Edge here. This is still running the classic version of Edge. This is not updated yet to the Chromium one. And you can really tell it's really not all that quick on the Windows. Even that took an H to load, and that's just the basic Microsoft Edge loading page. The MSN page, not that quick either. So yeah, I'm not really sure if I would recommend running Windows 10 on this. I think you're probably better off running Windows 8.1. It's still supported for three more years, at least by Microsoft. But uh, yeah, this is not great. 
I remember back in the day when I uh, had a MacBook 2007 and also had a 2009 early MacBook at some point. I ran Windows 7 on that as the secondary OS when Windows 7 was still natively supported by Microsoft through updates, which is no longer the case as we all know. Obviously it's going to update. That's just amazing. But anyway, as I was saying, I ran Windows 7 on those machines and it ran, ran very well from what I remember. Definitely didn't stutter in as much as this one does. And the C8100 Core 2 Duo really isn't that bad of a chip. It's, 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 it's a Penryn chip, so it is the newer architecture. 2.1 GHz is not all that high, but it's good enough for basic use, I'd say. And really, we're just going to sit here while I'm making the video. Really, I just, I can't be arsed away for this. I'll just select uh, Mac OS again in the boot picker. Zero tolerance right here. I mean, it's already slow, so what hell do we want to wait for Windows to make up its mind? Let's put into Mac OS here. Like I said, this is a Mac OS Lion, which was still called Mac OS X Lion. Later they dropped to Mac, and later they dropped to 10. So, yeah. Let's log in here. Go For some reason, the webcam light is on. Apparently, something in the background is trying to use my camera. That's weird. I guess there's something on the other side filming us. So yeah, got some programs on here, like the Microsoft Office Suite. This is Office 2011, which is the last version that will run on Lion. If you wanted 2016 or later suites, you need at least Yosemite or I think High Sierra even for uh, 2019. Might be Sierra though. So yeah, Office 2011 starts up reasonably quickly. It was a very good suite for uh, what it was. We also have the iWork suite made by Apple themselves. This is iWork 09. And this here is Numbers. Let's open up a sheet here. Works very well. So let's do some browsing. I don't know why it's loading up a page for Doom cheats. Oh, that's right. I needed a cheat for uh, jumping to another level for the recording that I did on the M16C sound card. I needed a way to jump uh, to different levels for the recording of the audio. So, because I knew a couple that were pretty good. Anyways, so let's go to a website that I always pick. That's typically pretty hard to load. Apparently this website uses Flash, so all of the media is not loading. I guess it would be a better test than to pick the latest version of Firefox that we run on here. Program starts up pretty quickly. Again, let's go to CNN.com, which is a very media-heavy website, as we all know. There we go. It's already loaded. It's a lot quicker than, than Windows 10, for sure. And even scrolling through it, it's not all that choppy. It's pretty good. So that's nice to see. So yeah, let's go to the About This Mac page and see what we got here. 10.75, 2.1 GHz Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM, MacBook 13-inch, early 2008. 
And by the way, it's right, it's saying Mac OS 10 server line 1075 because just for shits and giggles, I've installed the Mac OS 10 uh, or Mac OS server app. If I can find it in a launch pad, it's, it's right there. Whatever. I haven't actually played with that too much. But yeah. The only thing that's holding us back on this machine is the Intel GMA X3100 graphics. That's also the main reason why this cannot run later version of Mac OS that well, or at all, basically. You can run uh, Mountain Lion on here. That's not too much hassle, and it works reasonably well. But uh, I've decided to just keep this one running Lion. It's good enough for now. I am going to see if I can downgrade Windows to 8.1 and see how that runs. But uh, this is mostly just, uh, you know, a decent Mac for around the house. It has Ethernet, so I can hook it up to the network if I need to do some stuff and or some troubleshooting. So that's definitely very much a plus. And it's not all that heavy of a machine. It's pretty nice. And it's quick enough to do stuff. Like usually uh, a while back when I had to do some uh, troubleshooting on some uh, LAN cables around the house, I actually used my MacBook G4 because my MacBook Pro Retina does not have an Ethernet port. And I really... Cannot be asked to pay 30 euros for a uh, gigabit Ethernet adapter to Thunderbolt. And even second-hand are still just around that price. I really just can't be bothered. Not at all. I just use this machine for that now. If I ever need to do some network troubleshooting, I can just hook it up to the switch and just go from there. It's very nice indeed. Alright, I guess that sums up this video. This was a short overview of my MacBook 2008. If you've got some suggestions on stuff you want to see on this laptop, leave it in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you all for watching.